Greetings everyone, welcome to the online MOOCs course on Machine Learning and Deep Learning Fundamentals and Application. I am Vivek Goswami, the teaching assistant for this course. I am a research scholar under the supervision of Professor M. K. Bhuyansa in IIT Guwahati. Today we will be having a programming session on Generative Adversarial Network and UNET Architecture. So let us begin our session today. So this will be the contents. Uh, we will be looking into generative adversarial network and unit architecture. So, as we have already seen in our theory classes, uh, what generative adversarial network is? Uh, generative adversarial network consists of two architectures. One is a generative network, another is a discriminative network. The generative network takes input as noise and generate images, and the discriminative network what it does it it compares the results with the real images and it can tell us if the image is a real or a fake so the steps that we will follow today is first we have to define gan architecture based on our application so in today's session our application will be to generate handwritten digits And the discriminator will be trained to distinguish between real and fake data. So, the real data will consider the MNIST data set. MNIST is a very famous handwritten data set that we will be considering for this session. So, first we will train the generator to fake the data that can fool the discriminator and then continue discriminator and generator training for multiple epochs so that we reach a level where the generator can generate fake data in such a way that the discriminator is unable to identify that and later we will save the generator model to create new and realistic fake data. So let us start with the coding. So you have already seen in the previous programming session how to use Google Colab and how to convert the notebook into a GPU or a TPU settings and how can you train convolution neural network. So for training this GAN or UNET, we will be also considering convolutional neural network as a backbone. So here you can see we have first imported the MNIST dataset from the tensorflow.keras.dataset and later uh, and in the next layers we have imported this layers which is the input layer the dense layer the reshape layer and the flatten layer we have also import back normalization leaky relu will be using rather than relu activation function uh, that will be more suitable for training this gan network and we will be using a sequential model and the model from keras model so that we can better optimize our code for optimizers we will be using adam optimizer and numpy and pyplot will be considering for error manipulation and plotting of the images or the graphs so first we will be defining our image size so you have considered an image of 28 cross 28 cross 1 so this is basically a grayscale image that is having only one channel why we have considered 28 cross 28 because taking too much bigger image will be too much resource and time consuming for training so we have made our input shape as 28 cross 28 cross 1 so this is basically our input shape now we'll be creating a directory so that we can save the images there so now let's build the generator module first so we have defined a function to do that we'll be inputting a noise or latent vector these are almost the same terminologies that are mostly used uh, separately in separate books or uh, tutorials that you will see so i have kept both of them so we'll be creating a 1d array of size 100 that is the noise so this will be randomly created 
okay as we have, you can see noise shape is written so this will be randomly created uh, 100 dimension uh, 1 cross 100 dimensional noise now we will be creating a sequential model as you have already seen in the CNN tutorial what is a sequential model sequential model basically lets us add layers sequentially means one after another so we will create a sequential model this sequential model as you have already seen we have imported from our Keras framework first we will be adding a dense layer so dense layer is basically a fully connected neuron layers that we will be first adding then we will be adding an activation function that is the leaky ralu function and then we will be adding batch normalization this momentum basically tells us how fast it, uh, it is going to train and leaky ralu alpha value will tell us about the uh, activation constraints so we will be having 256 neurons in the first layer in the second layer we will be again having 512 neurons and rest will be same your alpha value will be 0.2 and momentum is 0.8 and the last layer of the generative network will have 1024 neurons with the alpha and momentum value same now we will be in the last layer we will be using a 10h activation function and we will be adding the image shape because at the end of the generator the generator should produce an image that is equal to the size of the input image so it should produce an image of size 28 cross 28 so what it is it is doing is that it is taking a hundred dimensional array and it is returning as a 28 cross 28 dimension image so it is considering a hundred dimensional noise and it is returning as an image of 28 cross 28 now we will be reshaping it to the image shape that is this one 28 cross 28 but initially we have shaped the image to be 28 cross 28 cross 1 and this is the channel information so we will be making the model like this so what our model will return it will consider an image and it will re it will consider a noise and it will return as an image so as i have already shown alpha is a hyperparameter which controls the underlying value to which the function saturates negative network inputs and momentum speed up the training now we will be defining our discriminator model so again we will be calling the sequential model now will be adding the flatten layer now the function of the discriminator is to return uh, if the image generated by the generator is real or fake as we have already seen in this structure the generator generates fake images and input to the discriminator whereas discriminator also takes a real image and tells us if the image is real or fake so that is the job of the discriminator so again we will be adding dense layer of 512 leaky relu dense layer of 256 leaky relu and at the end a dense layer of 1 because it will be out it will be outputting the value if it is a real or fake image so it's a binary value that is that it will up output that's why we are using the activation sigmoid because sigmoid works best in case of binary output so again the model will return the validity so we will be inputting the image and we will be getting the validity as output okay so we will be looking into the training so we will be defining a training function so first we'll load the data set like this and we'll first see that the data set is in uint format so first we'll convert it into a floating 32 and then scale it to minus 1 to 1 we can also scale it to 0 to 1 but i prefer scaling it to minus 1 to 1 for the purpose of uh, better training 
now you can see i have added a channel that is i have expanded it so now from now our image will be like this in this step i have included another channel to make the image like this again i have taken half the batch because i have considered a batch size of 128 this training function will take input as epoch batch size and save interval that after how many interval or iteration uh, it should save the images in the images folder that i have already created as i have shown in the previous slides so i have considered half batch this batch size is 128 so our half batch will be around 64 now when epoch in range of epoch so our total number of epochs was will be giving that in the input so for every epoch so this tells us for epochs in range of effect so for each epoch what we are gonna do the functionalities we are gonna look now so what we will we'll do in this is that when we we'll loop through a number of epochs to train our discriminator by first selecting a random batch of images from our true data set generating a set of images from our generator feeding both set of images into discriminator and finally set setting the loss parameters of both real and fake images as well as the combined loss what does this mean this means that first we will be generating some random numbers these random numbers will be from your zero to your half batch and it it will be tra x dot train dot shape your x dot train dot shape zero x dot train dot shape will actually return you an array with the shape of the image so for example your x train has 300 images of shape 28 28 and 1 okay so your x dot train dot shape will return this as an array so your shape 0 means this 300 then the number of images present or the number of entries present okay and we'll be selecting those random images now what we'll do is will generate some noise points between 0 to 1 of size 64 cross 100 okay and those images uh, those noise images will be fed into the generator where the generator will predict or generate a set of fake images now these fake images will be again fed into the discriminator to know the to get the discriminator's loss fake and again real images will be fed to the discriminator to get the real image loss and will take average of both the losses because based on one loss we cannot take a decision so we'll be taking average of both the losses now since our generator has given us some output and the discriminator has again given us some output now let's train the generator to better learn it and generate better images so the discriminator cannot identify which is real or fake so the training of the gen in the training of the generator phase will be first again generating a set of noise similar to the last one that we did and now for fooling the discriminator we'll be considering some validation predicted outcomes so this what this line does is this will create a vector of ones so it's telling the discriminator that whatever fake image that the generator has generated are real images and those are valid so again we'll be calculating the generator loss by training the generator on this noise that we have created now and this input predicted values that we have generated that will be used to fool the discriminator that is the real images so we'll be printing those values and 
will be if the epoch is divided by the save intervals that is 20 then we will be saving image at each epoch. So, basically after every 20 intervals we will be saving images to get to know if our generator is generating uh, good fake images and if our discriminator is not able to discriminate it or not. Again in this function we will be looking at sample images. So, for example, rows and columns I have defined as 5 and 5. I have uh, generated a random noise and predicted that using a generator. So, the generator create some Im fake images. We have rescaled the fake images to from 0 to 1 and we have plotted those things. So, we have created a figure and axis. We have kept a count of it and from the range of row to column I have just in the axis this axis that I have created I have plotted the image and this I am saving after a fixed number of epochs. So, I hope I am clear till this point. Now, let us define our optimizer. So, as I have mentioned we will be using the Adam optimizer and we will be considering the learning rate as 0 0.0002 and our momentum to be 0.5 here. Okay. Now, we will be building the discriminator and we will be compiling it using binary cross entropy and matrix we will be considering as accuracy. Why binary cross entropy? Because I have already mentioned that discriminator will discriminate if the Real, uh, image is a real or a fake and that is a binary classification problem that is why we are using a binary cross entropy loss and the matrix we have used as an accuracy. Again we will be building the generator with the binary cross entropy as well because the generator also uh, generate images that are based on two categories either they are fake or they are real. So, we will be inputting a 100 shape noise point to the generator and the generator will generate fake images. Now, why this discriminator trainable function we have set to false here because at the time of training the generator we do not want our discriminator to get trained as well because we have seen and it is a proven fact that when we train two networks separately, it is bet giving better outcome and it is actually good. So, while the generator is training, we stop the discriminator training and we make sure that the discriminator is not training at the same point of time. This saves us resources as well as it is better when it comes to the outcome. So, now, since our generator has been trained, we will be sending the images generated by our generator into the discriminator and after that, we will be combining both the models. So, in this step, it is very important to understand this step. In this step, we have combined the models and also set our less loss function and optimizer till now. So, we are training the generator, we are setting the discriminator training to false and then again sending the images generated by the generator to the discriminator to get the validation of the images. Now, we have to create this combined model where stack generator and discriminator takes. So, in this model, a noise in input into the system the system generates images and determines its validity. So, this model basically is combining generator and discriminator into the same uh, model and this is what a generative adversarial network is. Again, we have considered binary cross entropy and optimizer optimizer that is Adam optimizer we are using. We will be training this for 1000 epochs that means it will run for 1000 iteration which is a batch size of 32 and the same interval of 50 and then as I have already mentioned in the steps we will be 
saving this generator so that we can uh, generate good fake images later after the generator is properly trained so this is the summary this is the discriminator summary uh, well this is the generator summary so we can see in the discriminator the total trainable parameters is this and the total trainable parameters in generator is this well is the total trainable parameters in discriminator is this the number of parameters in generator is more compared to discriminator because discriminator is a very simple network which basically does it it predicts if the image input is valid or not whereas the generator generates a set of images from noise data and that is why it's a more complex network you can see the parameters at every stages and based on these parameters you can actually know how much training time is it gonna take or how much memory it is gonna take and all those things we can uh, configure from this how to calculate this training parameters there are ways to do that for uh, those are different when we are using fully connected networks or convolutional networks so we'll see in the coming slides if we can look into one of those so this is the training you can see here the data set is getting downloaded as we have imported it directly from the keras so it is getting downloaded here and the training has started you can see this is the discriminator loss and this is the generator loss that is changing at every epoch and this are the number of samples that are considered for each epoch that is based on our batch size uh, we consider our batch size such that our total number of samples divided by the batch size is the total number of samples that is considered for each epoch so that is the advantage of an having a batch size as you have already seen these things in the previous programming session in the convolutional neural network is just the same now since we have trained our gan and we have saved the model now it is not possible to save uh, the train the model every time so it's important that you save the generative model or the generator model and later you just load the model and you can generate new images so that's what we have done here we have imported the model here and what we are doing is we are providing random noise to the uh, model and it is generating as a an image so this is the image that the model has generated you can see this resembles to 9 and it's a it's actually a fake image which somewhat resembles to 9 handwritten 9 okay now considering for multiple images so we have uh, defined a function for generating latent input we just give the num latent dimension and the number of samples as input to the function and it generates as a input okay so we have given 100 dimension and 16 as the number of images that we need so this is basically plotting of the images where we are considering a 4 cross 4 uh, dimension and every cell would display an image so based on this latent points what this is returning we have generated some fake images using our model the saved model and we have plotted here so you can see this pretty much resembles the handwritten digits and these are actually fake images generated by our generator network so this is all about generative adversarial network and this is what we have seen the generative adversarial network for generating handwritten digits now we'll be looking into another very important architecture 
that you have already seen in the theory classes the unit architecture so unit architecture is basically used for image segmentation it was proposed for biomedical image segmentation and that is why uh, i have considered a case of biomedical image segmentation only where we will be segmenting mri images uh, of brain where we will be segmenting the brain tumors from mri images so this is the architecture that we will be looking into our input image will be a three channel input image so that is be a rgb image and will be having this number of filters and these are the concatenation block these are up convolution of 2 cross 2 and these are max pooling layers and these are convolution layer so you can see there are multiple convolution layer that are present okay so what we thought better would be to define a convolution function only I'll come to this later. First, I'll tell you. So, this is the data set that we have considered. This is a brain tumor data set, segmentation data set. So, you can upload the zip file of the data set into your Google Collab file system and then use this snippet of the code to actually extract the zip file to a normal folder now we'll be implementing this sorry we'll be importing this libraries that will be important for our uh, tasks to implement numpy as you all know is used for matrix manipulation os lets us have the idea of the path and everything glob is a library which lets us select images and uh, consider number of images or path cv2 which is an open cv library used for image manipulation matplotlib is for plotting random is a another library and tensorflow is a framework that is used to implement or code deep learning models so this is the these are the path of my images that is the train valid and test path of the images and the masks this I have written like this. Now, first thing I have to arrange the data set. That is, I have to read every image and store it uh, in an array or a list so that I can uh, read from that list and better uh, train the model. Okay. So, I have created a data load function where first I have sorted the images according to the path the path you have already seen for the mask and the images so i have just sorted it and i have set the image size to 128 plus 128 again this is done to reduce the time and complexity on the of the network for training and resource and resources okay so again we have created two lists for one for the image and one for the mask now we'll iterate to the image through the image list and we'll be reading every image using this open civil library and we'll be resizing those image because those image can be of different shape and different size so we'll be resizing it into the size we have mentioned here of 128 okay and then we'll be appending to this image data set same thing we will be doing for the mask and appending into the mask data set now i will be normalizing the images uh, it is important to normalize the images so that we can remove the bias towards higher values and that is important for segmentation that's why it is been done and we will return the image data set and the mask data set so again we have called the data load function uh, providing the path of the image and the mask for again for test we have done the same and for uh, validation set also we have done the same thing now we can see that our training set will have this shape the validation set and the test set 
now the height will be this one the width will be again this one and the number of channels is 3 so when we call the shape of this training set say train dot shape will return me array of this one so this is the zero po position index there is the one index this is two index and this is the third index okay so our first index is our height the second index is width and the third index is channel so this is what i have set here and that will be our input shape image height image width and image channels now again the number of labels i have set to one because what we are trying to predict here is a mass and the mass is basically a binary object so it has only a foreground and a background okay so mass is basically binary that's why i have set the number of levels to one and i have set the batch size to two because of the memory constraints that our system that will get trained on will have that is our google gp so this is one of the image that i have shown this is the mri image that has the brain structure and this is the tumor so you can see basically this only has a foreground and a background okay so this is a binary image so we'll have only one class there is a binary class okay so that's why i have set the label to one so as i have mentioned already we are having many convolutional blocks okay that is a three cross three convolution block a batch normalization and a having a relu there is an activation okay so what i have done is i have created a function for those convolution block okay so it's taking the input size the filter size and these are the number of filters okay so this is how convolution block is added as you have already seen in the previous programming session this i am adding the block norm batch normalization and then an activation layer so this filter size will be 3 cross 3 as you will see here when i am inputting the filters i am considering 3 cross 3 and the number of filters will change for every layer that you have seen already that this are having 32 filters these are having 64 filters 128 256 512 and so on so first we'll be considering the down sampling so down sampling you are knowing that is this layer this is known as the down sampling that is extracting the features and this is known as the up sampling and this is the down sampling okay now first we'll be defining the down sampling layer so we'll be first having a convolution layer having 32 filters 3 cross 3 is the filter size and inputs so your inputs will be basically an input layer with input shape and your data type will be float 32 so this function that i have created for defining unit will take in as the input shape so here our input shape will be 128 cross 128 cross 3 this we have defined earlier only okay and number of classes we know will be one because it's a binary segmentation okay so input layer we have built this is the first cnn layer now we'll be having the first max pooling layer so see we are having two cnn layers and then we are having a max pooling layer okay so we have defined two cnn layers two cnn layers and then we are defining the max pooling layer with pool size 2 cross 2 again we are considering 64 filters of same 3 cross 3 
and we will be ha having again two CNN layers here. So, here two CNN layers we are having, sorry, here we are having two CNN layers. Again, here also we are having two CNN layers. This you can see here we are having two CNN layers. We will be giving two feature maps at every step. Okay. Again, we will be having a max pooling. Again, two CNN layers, but this time 128 filters. Again, max pooling, 256 filters, two CNN layers, max pooling, and finally 512 filters. Okay. Now, you know that in an unit architecture, it is important to upscale as well as it is important to concatenate as well to get the special features and also to get the features which are extracted by the downsampling or the encoder section. So, those are important and to revive the special feature, we do the up convolution. Okay. So, in the up sampling layers, we will first do an up sampling or the up convolution and then we will be concatenating the last layer with this layer. So, we will be first up sampling this or convolving this and then concatenating from this one. Okay. So, we are up sampling it and concatenating it. So, 512 we are having, we have, we are up sampling it and we are concatenating this one. Okay. So, it is basically 256, 256 and then we will having a convolution block to get the 256 filters here. Okay. So, that is what we have done. Similarly, for the next layers, we have done the same thing. Okay. But in the final layer, I have used a 1 cross 1 convolution to number of classes. So, what 1 cross 1 convolution does is, 1 cross 1 convolution reduces the number of filters to the required number of filters, keeping the spatial dimension same. So, for th from this layer, I will be getting an image of 128 cross 128 cross 1 that is similar to the input image that we have initially input to the network. Again, we will be applying batch normalization and sigmoid layer. Sigmoid layer why? Because we are considering binary segmentation. So, this final layer and input considering this we will be creating the unit model and we will return the model for this function that we have created for unit architecture. Now, we will be calling the unit architecture with the shape 128 cross 128 cross 1 and we are printing the sum summary of the network as we have seen for generator and discriminator summaries. Okay. Again, we will be compiling the optimizer with Adam binary cross entropy and matrix will be considering is that accuracy. Okay. So, this is basically the uh, summary of the network. You can see this is our input, this is the next layer that we are having, this is again the next layer we are having, and these are the number of parameters for every layer. So, for this convolution layer. How did we get this parameter is that we are having the number of filter size as 3 cross 3 okay? and what is the number of filter size here uh, also 3. So, it will be 3 cross 3 cross 3 plus 1 into the number of filters that is 32. So, that is 28 cross 32. If you do this, you will get to 896. So, this is how we get parameters for convolution layers. So, we can see 
again this till this point we are having 32 filters number of filters get on increasing this is the first convolution block we have 32 filters again the second convolution block we had 32 filters only okay from the third convolution block the number of filters became 64 and it goes on like this 64 then 128 then 256 512 and it again decreases in the upsampling block and finally we get the input dimension only and this is the total trainable parameters that we are having okay so we will start the training we have imported time so we will note the start time and the end time so we will train this for 15 epoch just to give the demo we have made shuffle false so that the data is not shuffled it's the same when the uh, this every epoch we consider the number of images it is not shuffled and it is it is taken sequentially so uh, in the model dot fit i have provided with the mask and image verbos one it sets uh, the uh, model to print these values while it is training these values while it is training okay batch size we have already set the batch size to 2 and this is the validation set the validation set is actually used to fine tune the network and we have trained it for 15 epochs again we have taken the stop time to just get the execution time and later we have saved the unit model so this is the training in each epoch this number of samples are considered and you can see the loss is converging the validation loss is also converging and we are getting surge in our accuracy okay so these are the loss curves and the accuracy curve that we have plot based on our model so you can you have seen when while training i have saved the training in this unit history and later on from this unit history i am just plotting this graphs by considering the loss and validation loss and considering the total number of epochs and dividing it into 15 say so 1 to 15 and how our loss is decreasing with the number of epochs we are looking into this and how our accuracy is also increasing with the number of epochs so since we have you are considering very less amount of accuracy sorry less amount of epoch so we are having this oscillation in the graph if we consider it for more epochs and considerable as consider a smaller learning rate then you will have a very smooth curve that is actually learning uh, learning fast and it's it will converge to a point where your model will be able to segment any new data that you input into this so this is all about the graphs that we have plot we are just plotting this b gives us the color and this is the uh, label that we are providing for every uh, this graph so this blue one is the training accuracy while the red one is the validation accuracy and similarly uh, for loss okay now predicting using unit so for predicting we have considered the mean iou and the f1 score that we have imported like this iou is intersection over union It has the formula of so it basically tells you if these are these two are the images it tells you 
this intersection over the total union and how much overlap is there between the mask and the image. So, it gives us the ratio of the overlap by the area of the union. Okay. Another metric that we have considered is the F1 score, which basically is the mean of the precision and recall. the harmonic mean what precision told us to tells us is that the ratio of the true positive to the total number of data points that are predicted positive by the model whereas recall tells us the ratio of the samples predicted positive out of the total sample of in the classes Okay, so the board tells us about the prediction of positive. So F1 score gives us a relative ratio between both of this, and that is why it is important when considering biomedical uh, images or data. Because bi in biomedical images, we cannot rely only on accuracy, as it gives the overall accuracy. It is more important to know the false positives and the false negatives in case of biomedical data. Okay. So, here again we have considered randomly a uh, image from the test set and the ground truth we have extracted, we have expanded the dimension and we have made the model to predict. So, the model is predicting on the test image and we are checking if for all the predictions that are greater than 0.5 are set as 1 and less than 0.5 are set as 0 to get this mask. Okay, And then we are just plotting this mask using this subplots. We have created three subplots and one is the testing image, this is the testing level and this is the prediction level. So, you can see we have got the mean IOU of 91.43 percent which is considerable. Uh, this we have considered like this number of classes and the prediction and the IOU we have calculated. Again we have done it for multiple images. So, we have taken a uh, set of images in our test set. So, we have iterated in our test set for every image we have calculated the predicted mask and we have calculated the mean IOU using this one and we have appended the IOU into a array. So, finally, we have calculated the F1 score and we have calculated the mean IOU and the F1 score. So, average F1 of all the frames we have got to be 98.02 which is quite good and mu IOU on the test set is 71.27 percent which is also considerable. So, if we increase the number of epochs and we adjust the learning rate the accuracy or the performance could be better improved for this network. So, in today's class what we have seen is we have seen two very important deep learning networks that is the generative adversarial network and another is the unit architecture. Generative adversarial network is used to generate fake images that uh, could be used for different purposes such as since there are less images present for some uh, application and it requires more images that could be tackled by generating some fake images that could be even a generative adversarial networks are very important for data augmentation task where uh, conventional data augmentation could be uh, replaced with generative adversarial networks for better implementation or better generation of fake images. Later, we have seen unit architecture, 
which is another very important deep learning architecture for image segmentation uh, that is mostly used in biomedical image processing or biomedical segmentation tasks and is a very important architecture because it gives us an encoder decoder structure where we input the image and we get the mask output of the same dimension. So those are the two networks that we have seen in today's session. So let's stop here today. Thank you.